What's up guys, Shane here from Fugitech 3D Printing. Today we're checking out the November 2018 Mondo Box. Welcome back guys. I said today we're checking out the November 2018 Mondo Box. The guys over at Mondo Box like the way I do my videos. They decided to send me some more of their box to review. This is now the third one that I'm checking out for them. And as I said, this is obviously November. Now Mondo Box is another one of the subscription services that are out there. There's three currently that are really the leaders right now, which is MakerBox, Mondo Box, and the newest competitor, which is Alien 3D. All of them provide a subscription service of sample filaments straight to your door. And they all have their own different take. The Mondo Box provides five filament samples in their box. Uh, and they're less of a premium type as far as I've had so far. Uh, MakerBox has more of the premium type filaments. And the Alien 3D Box is all about the experience and what you can make with the filaments and things like that. And they also usually have like a premium item that comes with them. So we're gonna check out what came in this box. All right, so right off the bat, if you're a new subscriber to the Mondo Box and you got your very first box, you're gonna get one of these. This is a laser cut spool that fits exactly the filament that they send. All you'd need is a little bit of, I'd say super glue, but you, I guess you could use wood glue for this, but it's just made out of um, some type of wood material. I'm not exactly sure what it is. You just put the little loop there together. It gets glued into the side that has the smaller holes. You glue it into those four points, and then you'll be able to take the upper spool, put it on, twist it a little bit, and it'll lock into place. I did ask them if I could have some more so that I could do more of these samples at once because I like using the items they provide, and I already have one spool right here. Here's my spool that I had before, and now I'm able to do two samples on two different printers at the same time. So I thank them for helping me out with that, but again, if you're a new subscriber, that's gonna be new to you. Let's see what all is in this month. All right, so here they have a little card here that says, you know, hello and thank you. Uh, let's see, this month's featured filament is a sample of Best Q's wood filled PLA, a sandable, standable filament, 30% wood fill. Also included is Coex's Pumpkin Orange Limited Edition PLA. Please visit their website for more monthly project ideas and things like that. <laughs> At the very end, um, uh, we, hope, we look forward to next month's offerings beginning to look a lot like Christmas because next month obviously will be the uh, December box ready for Christmas. Uh, they do include one of their 3D PG stickers in the box and here we have our five samples. Oh, the other thing that I didn't uh, mention is this is new. Uh, here we have a little uh, laser cut and etched of uh, their logo, a little wood chip. That's uh, different, but they do include these. These are their little maker coins that they have for each filament and they print it in each one, which again, I am so surprised that they do it. And I will say the quality is rather good compared to some of the first ones that I had received. So they have the orange, there's a brown, there's a wood fill, there's an army green, and there is a, uh, just a very light gray, translucent gray, yeah. Uh, so it kind of gives you an idea of what the samples are going to look like once you print them onto the filament. So first up we have, again, 3D Best Q's Wood-Filled PLA. Never heard of this company before, but I am super excited for a Wood-Filled PLA. They are some of my favorites. So it's a premium wood fill because it's in 30% wood, which means that it's obviously 70% plastic. Uh, true wood tone can be sanded and stained. This filament is less abrasive than other compost composite filaments. I don't consider wood as a... Um, Abrasive filament, some people do, but I personally don't. Print specifications, it's PLA. Print speed, 30 to 100 millimeters per second. Extrude temp, 200 to 220 C. Might need to bring that down a little bit. Wood PLA normally prints at a lower temperature, but we'll see. Bed temp, zero to 50, and again, it is non-abrasive. All right, here we have a nice chocolate brown PLA from 3D Solutech, very nice, rich brown color. Uh, ultra smooth technologies, includes filaments capable of beautiful smooth extractions, help build even most delicate objects made in USA. Uh, I've used 3D Solutech filament before, I loved it, so hopefully this is gonna be a lot of the same. It's PLA, uh, 50 to 100 millimeters a second is your print speed, 190 to 220 on the extruder, zero to 60 on the bed, and it is non-abrasive as it is just normal PLA. Coex, limited edition color PLA. I actually recently just got a shipment in from Coex to do a review 
Uh, they sent me a whole slew of their different filaments to test out. So this will help me kind of gauge on how that's going to be. So this is pumpkin orange PLA made using prime virgin resin colorants and processing additives. Film extrudes smoothly and consistently made in the USA. Uh, the print specifications, it's PLA obviously, 30 hundred per second is your print speed, extruder temp 215 to 235, so a little bit higher than you know general PLA. Bed temperature is zero to 60 and it is non-abrasive. And all these also give you a URL to the manufacturer's website if you wanna check out more. Okay, so that, that very translucent gray is actually a gray PETG from uh, Nova Maker 3D Printing Filament. Uh, the company, again, never heard of before, which is kinda nice is I've done like 200 samples with MakerBox, yet I'm still seeing companies I've never even heard of before. So this is really cool. So Nova Maker's PETG filament uh, are adjusted to the degradability of the material for optimal performance in making filament not brittle during printing. A great alternative to ABS. PETG, yes, is a very middle of the road uh, filament. You have PLA being very easy, ABS being a little more difficult, PETG filling that nice middle ground. Print specifications, obviously PETG. Print speed, 50 to 100 millimeters a second. Extruder temp, 220 to 260. It's a big range, do a temp tire, make sure you know what you're doing. Bed temp zero to 80 and it is non-abrasive. All right, so here we have Segaden uh, Linus Series 1 PLA in Army Green. Yet again, another company I have not heard of. This is actually gonna be a very interesting box, a good learning experience for me. A quality standard PLA filament prints smoothly with rich colors consistent throughout the spool, can be used as an everyday printing filament, a nod to our military with this army green spool. All right, print specifications, it is 30 to 100 millimeters a second, extruder temp 195 to 230, bed temperature zero to 70, and again, not abrasive, and this is found on Amazon, very cool. So that's what, three new three new companies, four new companies? Four new companies out of five for me. That That's that's impressive, I will say. I am very much looking forward to testing these out. So I'm gonna get these on a couple printers and we'll see how they do. All right, the prints are in. I am much less shaggy than I was before. I do note that and people are gonna comment. But either way, in a box of what I'm gonna call first, I have no experience with four out of the five. One, which was the 3D Solutech, I have printed their PLA in a different color, but it's the first time with this color. The other four brands I have not even touched before, which is really, really cool to see, and I'm very pleased with the results. So I wanna get a close dive into these and show you how they turned out. Okay, so first up, we're gonna look at the Linus Series 1 PLA. It's Army Green by a company called Seagarden, or Seagaden, something like that. Seagaden, S E. G-A-D-E-N, yeah, something like that. But yeah, so this is their army green and they did this as a tribute to the uh, military and it's, this stuff turned out fantastic. It also did a great job over supports. If we can zoom on that, there we go. A little bit left over. I just didn't get out the exacto knife to pick up those last little itty bitty bits. This was printed on the Anycubic i3 Mega. Again, over supports, but yeah, you can see the ultra base uh, design on the bottom there. This literally just comes right off the bed once it's done printing. But yeah, there's no under extrusions, no over extrusions anywhere. It turned out really nice on the cogs. It did a great job around all of the uh, roundoffs here. Not too many flat parts. So there was, there was little. So there was one little under extrusion here. It could have been a partial clog. It's kind of hard to tell. But it was just that part right there. There's another one right here, it seems like. So there was a little bit of either under extrusion or clog going on there. So that could actually been the film was too large and had to get forced through there. Or again, under extrusion, the film was too uh, narrow during that part. But I really, really did like this. Uh, there is a little bit of color variation, as you can see here, a little bit of like a darker green in here, like the normal green here, and a little bit lighter up in there. Could just be because of the way the, lay the layers are laying, but. Uh, anyway, I did really like this. All right, so here's a wood-filled PLA from 3D Best Q. This, I have to say, was probably the best wood filament I've tested. This is probably about the fifth or sixth one I've gone through now, uh, roughly. Yeah, I've gone through quite a bit now, but this just turned out absolutely fantastic. It was a tad bit stringy, a little bit pimply, which does happen, so I kind of acknowledge that, but it is so rough feeling right now, like super rough. Like you can definitely tell it definitely has a high uh, content of wood dust in there. If you can kind of get in there, you see almost looks like grain work. It looks absolutely fantastic. Again, needs a little bit of cleanup because this does print at a lower temperature and it can be stringy. But here if we look at the bottom, it did a generally good job over supports. I do have a little bit, 
Left in there, it seems I didn't get it all. Oh yeah, I couldn't find my X-Acto knife when I was cleaning this off. Uh, but I now have just found it. And there was just a little bit of the support left out here. So I just took a file and just went across it like so to get that off. But yeah, I mean, great bottom layers on the Ultra Base there. Really nice walls. It cooled very well around the cogs. As you can see, there's no flat parts in any of these. It filled in great. This was, I mean, honestly, the best wood filament I've ever tested. And I'm definitely reaching out to these guys to get some more because this will be awesome to test out. All right, here we have a gray PETG from Nova. Nova Maker. And again, came out great. This was actually printed on the Hypercube that I built. And again, a little bit of color variation in there. So some light, almost like whitish looking there. Some light grays to dark grays. Various through. I think it does look like a cool print. Uh, there were no under extrusions, over extrusions on this one. It held to the ultra base very well. And as you see here around the cogs, there's no problems there. Over support, it did a doggone good job. Come on, there we go, see? Over supports, did really, really nice. Going over top of those, nice bottom layer. Stuck no problem to the ultra base, which is really nice to see. No glue stick or anything like that was needed. That was heated up to uh, 70C and held onto this. So this one I really did like, and it's very minimal stringing with like two, three strings there. So it was really, really nice. All right, here's that chocolate brown I talked about earlier from 3D Solutech. I have used a few of their PLAs and their TPU filaments, but never this color. And it's a kind of a matte finish. You can see there are a couple shiny spots here and there on the top layers. But other than that, it is actually a fairly matte finished color. This is also printed on the Hypercube, so that also has an ultra base on it, which has a nice shine to the bottom there. No peeling up anywhere. Cooling was pretty good. There's like this one spot here, I think it was, but it might have been two of them. And again, it did have a few under extruded points right here again, and that was very similar to where they showed up here in the uh, Seagadden one. Almost exactly the same. So I'm wondering if it actually was just a hiccup in the STL because those are both printed on the same machine. Not sure, but overall, awesome print. All right, here's the limited edition orange PLA and Coex. And this was printed on the Anycubic i3 Mega. And this did under extrude just a little bit. Uh, I think I should have upped the multiplier for this one filament. Other filaments came out fine, but this does happen. A few of them are a little under spec overall in the sample spool. So this one just needed to be upped a little bit. Uh, it did have uh, several under extrusions throughout it. So there was the one there. And I thought there's another one. Yeah, there's another one down in here. This kind of ripple here. It wasn't really too bad of one down there, but uh, was not very happy with that. Uh, either way, no real stringing with it. It held on great to the ultra base. It went over the support pretty well. I'd give it a good 7 out of 10 there. As you can see, there's the design there from the ultra base. And there's no peeling up. And actually did really good around on the cog. So it was kind of a mixed bag on this one. It could have just been the part of the sample that I got. But either way, it is what it is. So again, overall, for being a lot of new filament for me, I think it turned out really good. There was that one part I said here where the two of these, I was misspoken before, it's not on the i3 Mega, this was on the Hypercube as well. They both have that under extrusion spot in the exact same place. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw on, but it's, it's a different, they were different uh, slices too. I mean, they were different uh, G codes because this was printed for PETG, this was printed for PLA. I'm gonna throw on some different ones and just kind of troubleshoot. Maybe there's something wrong with the printer at that point. I'm not sure, but I will throw some other filament on there just to kind of go through the cycles, a few more prints with it and see how it does. Yeah, I'm not really sure why that was happening. Very impressed with all this. So I want to thank uh, Mondo Box for sending this to me. They did send this to me for free for the purpose of this review of the filaments coming in it. I do like the service. Comes in right around $25 uh, per month. If you want to join in, you get five samples of 20 meters each and it can be anything. This is the first time they had an exotic in there because the last time there were no exotics and I don't, the other one that I reviewed, I can't remember if there was a PETG in there or not. I think there was, but either way, I'm happy to see exotics finally make it in there. Hoping to see more wood filaments, more carbon fiber filaments, maybe some stuff from Protopasta that's really expensive though. Uh, comes in around $80 for half kilo. So I understand if that's a little bit harder to fit in the price point for the box of the volume they're buying at. So this is a smaller company, Mondo Box. They are not MakerBox. MakerBox puts out like a, what, a few thousand boxes a month. So that's a lot of samples and they can buy in these huge bulk packaging and they can get great discounts at buying that way. A small company like this, they really can't do that yet. 
So I do wish them well and hope that they do uh, grow more because I do like what they do provide. And since they're helping me out, they have a special going on right now. It only goes on for a little bit longer, but for everyone that signs up, you get two extra samples and you also get the laser cut spool holder in your very first one. This happens for anyone, anytime you order, even after the promotion is over, but you still get the free laser cut spool, which fits these perfectly, which I really do like. Uh, but either way, you get the two free samples. You get seven samples in your first box. So if you're looking to dive into new types of filaments or new colors, this might be something that you're interested in. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope this helped you out. If you have the Mondo box, you had questions, and you viewed this, or whether you decided to buy this or not to buy the service, uh, I hope it helped you in either one of those decisions. And if it did, give it a thumbs up. Thumbs down if it didn't. Talk to me in the comments down below. I want to hear from you guys whether you like the video or not and about the Mondo box, what you guys think about it. So if you want to stay tuned what's going on, hit that big old subscribe button down there and hit the bell icon. That we get an email notification when I upload new content. If you want to support me financially, right below me is a Patreon link. Donate a dollar more. I appreciate it. And that gets you access to my Patreon feed and to the after show that I film after almost all my new videos. Otherwise, you guys can help out. There's going to be some one-time links down below for one-time donations or some affiliate links for various vendors, some coupon codes, help you save you some money a little slice of what you buy at them comes back here to help me out the channel and i appreciate that so thanks for watching guys until next time happy printing